with The Real Cinema's Blackpool and Balancholic and online at therealpicture.com. In a world where there's a million movie podcasts, here comes another one from themoviebit.com. This is The Podcast. Who taught you that technique? A friggin' cheese grater? Anything gets more than three blocks out, you turn it back or you turn it to ash. So you listen to me and you listen well. Hey everybody, how are you doing? Welcome to the podcast from the moviebit.com with thanks to the Real Picture Cinema, Blackpool and Balancholic. Check them out online, the Real Picture. Dot com. My name is Victor Barry. Over there is Tom White. And I say over there. Hello, everyone. He's three inches away from me. There's a mm. pun there, but I just, <laughs> I, nah, I ain't getting there. Uh, this week on the podcast, going to be talking about War Machine. Have Netflix finally recreated the success of their TV shows in movie form? Have they knocked one out of the park or have they not? Uh, also, uh, going to be talking about Baywatch. Hmm. Mm, mm. That that grows just says it all. There we go, spoiler. <laughs> and if you ever feel the need for speed, then we are going to be telling you how you can feel the need for speed again. All that and a whole lot more, including our critically acclaimed screen actor, all between now and the end of this podcast, which could really happen at any time. Yep. But before we end it, we like to start it with Tom's Trivia 3. Tom's Trivia 3. All right. Um, the wrestler. Mm-hmm. Great film, depressing film. Never have that oh, as... Oh, I wouldn't have said it was a depressing <laughs> film. Ne- let's just say this. Never have it as a double bill or wrecking for a dream. No, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, the video game that Randy and the kid play in The Wrestler was specially made for the movie and is actually fully playable. That's where the budget went then. That's where the budget went. <laughs> to make a game look exactly like an old NES game. Um, uh, now onto the original Robocop. And apparently the suit... That awesome suit that Paul Weller wore was so hot that he was losing three pounds. Peter Weller. Peter Weller. I said Paul Weller, didn't mm-hmm. I? Yeah. yeah, I think the musician. Yeah, uh, yeah, Peter Weller. Uh, he was losing three pounds of uh, three pounds a day from water loss. We all need that suit. Yeah, we all need that suit. Uh, it was counteracted by eventually an air conditioner was installed. And that suit's big enough that you can put, like, six in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one for your ass, one for your head, one for your ball. No. Yeah. yeah. And then... What a suit, though. Oh, it's it's one of the the greatest, like, iconic movie prosthetics, movie suits, whatever. And rest assured, you could not buy that suit for a dollar. No. Your move, creep. Tom? Okay, and uh, finally, uh, sorry, I forgot what the reaction that was. And finally, Pax Stewart and Ian McKellen didn't know how to play chess for the final scene in X Men, and a chess master had to be brought in to teach them. That must have been so boring. What, I'm not a chess fan. Are you? Uh, I used to play it when I was a kid. I haven't played it in ages. Did you since you got beat up? No, actually, I got beat up for an entirely different thing in school. Right. <laughs> that must be like, hello, I'm here to teach you chess. Good. Mm. Sit down. Teach us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just... No. Yeah. Not a fan. No. Not Could a fan. they not have faked it? Could somebody said, look, you move that fucking thing there, and you move that there, and you move that there. That's all we need for the <laughs> shot. We all, we all know X-Men is about realism. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 it's an authentic mutant experience. Uh, maybe they just wanted to to make a like that chess scene is kind of like a metaphor as well for their relationship, so they wanted to get it right, probably. But they still could have faked it. Yeah, they could have went to some schools. And anybody here play chess? I do. Hey, you want to go see some fucking movie stars and stuff? Yeah. Come on. Uh, d- d- just made the kid's hands to look like old Patrick Stewart. <laughs> well, he could have just... The Prosthetic kid, hands. The kid could have just said, you move that thing there, and then you take that bishop, and you fucking trample over that rook. We'll try labor laws. Uh, yeah. Uh, maybe they could have went to a college. <laughs> yeah, but did you say the X-Men is a real... Yeah. <laughs> just, it adds to the realism. Mm. Mm. By the way, you can get in touch with us, podcast at themoviebit.com. If you're online, you can also hit us up on Twitter. 
at the movie bit on the Facebook page. And of course, if you still don't know the movie bit, hey, you know those Netflix people? Yes. They have done some amazing stuff with TV series. Yep. They are, well, what we may call a TV series, but it's just one long movie, as the Netflix people would call it. Mm. House of Cards. Um, 13 Reasons Why. 13 Reasons Why. House of mm. Cards. <laughs> uh, they have done created some award-winning content. And they've been trying their hand at the movie stuff for quite some time now. Uh, they mm. had... Uh, uh, critically beast. panned Adam Sandler outing on more than one occasion. <laughs> they had three. Which, uh, according to Netflix, has seen some of their biggest streaming figures. Yeah. Which but, is fine. Uh, you know, I, I, do those streaming figures equate into from start to finish? Or is it like the Facebook video view, which is if you view video for <laughs> on Facebook for three seconds or more, then it's classed as a view. Are people just watching the bit they want to see and then moving on? So they have a movie coming out around Christmas time with Will Smith. He's a cop. Uh, with a bunch of fairies and stuff. Yep. Uh, and Bryce. Then, it's called Bryce, people. And then uh, Brad Pitt signed up for a movie called War Machine, which is in one of, in one of the more uh, recent wars, take your pick, <laughs> um, in Afghanistan. And it kind of, he replaces one general because he wasn't getting enough shit done. And they bring Brad's character in. To get shit done because he has this reputation of getting stuff done and he's highly successful. He looks he looks like George Papard from the A team. Um, and does a plan come together? No, it <laughs> doesn't. It, was gonna ask that. No, it fucking doesn't. Um, it's it's as a genre, even on Netflix, it's classed as a dark comedy. It's never quite sure what it is because he goes on this tour around Afghanistan, and there's a nice little piece from Ben Kingsley in there, who's again channeling the the Mandarin. A little yeah. bit. Uh, Hang on, the Mandarin or Trevor? No, the Mandarin. The actual Mandarin. Yeah, right. yeah. He's he's working overtime in the accents, as is uh, Brad Pitt, who is channeling quite a bit of Lieutenant Aldo Rain from mm. Inglorious Bastards. However, the movie. You know how people always criticized Lord of the Rings. That's just a movie about fucking walking. Yeah. This War Machine movie is a movie about talking. From start to finish. All they do is just talk, 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 talk. You can fast forward through it and you mm. just stop at random. Talk, 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 talk. And then towards the end, they're kind of, there's a, I won't even say it's tension. They're just walking down the street and someone holds a gun. Oh, right. and, and then like there's more talk, 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 talk. And not in the tense kind of yeah. negotiator, negotiation way. It's just talk, talk, oh, talk yeah. while he's kind of getting a vibe for Afghan. Um, and like a movie, a movie that's all talk isn't a necessarily a bad thing. It's no, but it's what the talking is about. But it's it's like or, the dialogue feels dragged out and extended, mm. and kind of even in the first fifteen minutes alone, you're like, okay, this is is it a comedy? There's times where you almost expect canned laughter. Okay, uh, it's that forced in places. It it it's a movie that to me is a little bit all over the shop. Um, but all it is is one long big piece of exposition that really goes nowhere except ambles at its own lethargic pace to the credits. It's a big thing for Netflix to have Brad Pitt on, without a doubt. Oh, definitely. Um, I don't think this was the the movie for him. Um, I'm not sure why he signed up for it. Did Kevin Space go, oh, these Netflix people, there, you get a fucking gig with them. I'm not sure. Um, it, it's It's... It's just a movie I did not like. Um, it's it's three stars, and that's three stars at a push. Um, it's not the be-all to end-all. It's okay. If there's absolutely positively nothing else that you have to watch, then it may suffice. But for me, I never want to watch it again. Okay. I would expect that Baywatch is something similar. Ugh. Uh, yeah. As in, I never want to watch Baywatch again. Or even think about Baywatch again. And, uh, like, I, I've, when it was coming out, I said this, like, 21 Jump Street is a lot to answer for. Mm-hmm. And it, and it, let's be honest, the first 21 Jump Street wasn't too bad. Yeah. It was, was good fun. It was I, it was funny. I even liked the sequel. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it kind the of... The name of Jeff. <laughs> I don't know how my son saw that bit, but he just keeps coming out with that. Mm. And getting to the point where it's just really fucking annoying now. <laughs> yeah. Oh god! But um, look, it knew 
that movie knew what it was. It knew that you can't really do a big screen remake of a show that, let's face it, not a lot of people remember. So it's, it was in on the joke. It just ripped the piss out of itself with every, every available opportunity. And all of these show, all of these big screen remakes or TV shows like Chips that have come after it have focused on the wrong thing. They said, oh, it's all, it was all rated. So we have to make our one all rated. And that's the... That's the approach that's been made to Baywatch. And let's face it, all people remember Baywatch for is David Hasselhoff, Pam Lanson, and that joke from Friends. I, I, I wouldn't call it a beloved TV show. I just remember it for part of Pamela Anderson. Part. <laughs> the slow motion part, was it? Just just any part <laughs> of her. <laughs> so, yeah, it's... um. So, yeah, that's what Baywatch is focused on. It's focused on the eye candy. It's focused on, like, the generic or age humour you'd expect from this type of movie. Like, stars Dwayne Johnson and Zac Efron, and you think two of them, okay, they're incredibly charming, incredibly charismatic. They've, had, they've done some great comedy turns apart in movies, so together it must be brilliant. This movie finds them on one of their off days because they can't wring a single laugh from this just offensively done script. Like... The whole movie just feels incredibly lazy. The plot is stolen from any number of 80s cop movies. It's basically... Um, Ef- Efron comes in. He's like the, the cocksure gold medalist. Um, and he wants to be on the team, on the Baywatch team. And the Johnson's going, no, no, I'm not this. You have to... He's, this over, he's an overzealous kind of lieutenant of the, the lifeguard force. And then... The main the main plot is you have an upmarket hotel is acting as a front for a drug operation, which uh, apparently the product is bat salts on mess, which just made me just roll my eyes. And but this main plot it, it doesn't matter, like it just it moves forward just really haphazardly. Plot points, characters just go. Oh, we need that to be here. There you go. That's it happening. And like the. The main villain's ultimate plan is revealed in this just throwaway uh, piece of dialogue. And like I've, when that happens, goes, okay, no one actually gives a crap about this story. Like, putting all of the focus on the gross eye humour and eye candy. And like, again, wanting to emulate the, the success of 21, Street, 21 Jump Street. And again, not getting what made that movie so successful. Um, and like, the, the cast and the crew, they just approach the subject matter with a reverence that I would call commendable if the movie wasn't so painful to endure. All the gross-out gags are just... just awful. There's a little... Okay. Um, when you hear about Baywatch, what was the one body part that you think they'd rely on? Tits. Nope, dicks. They're just so, just like... A avalanche of dick jokes and it's like at one point Zach Efron is holding a flaccid penis in his hand and that's the joke he's just holding a penis I, all of the jokes hit with the impact of a bone dry sponge and there's a, a good bit of action in this as well and it's all shot against really bad green screen and uh, just really bad effects I just, they hear that well in the trailers actually because there was one instance in the trailer where I said that's really shitty looking green screen it was only there for a second yeah um, but yeah okay like yeah there, there's they have outtakes at the end and there's a base where they're in the movie they were on a boat and kind of the background of the ocean behind them and then in the outtakes they're against green screen it goes alright that's why it looks so bad this is lazy unfunny and like I think Baywatch is the worst example of this new trend for R-rated TV remakes. Just just avoid this, please. If you ever listen to me, avoid this movie once there. There you go, kiddies. Is David Hasselhoff in it? Yes. Mm. I'll just say his uh, his cameo in Guardians was much better than this one. And he's only in there for five seconds. Just some of the last breaths of my life escaping <laughs> my body there. Well, because David Hasloff, where he's putting a bad just, performance. Just in general. <laughs> just in general, just, David just in general. Um, Last week, uh, if you were listening, if you subscribed, then you can go back and get it for free on iTunes and Stitcher. 
Uh, Tom had a, uh, uh, an interesting trivia fact for us from Tom's mm-hmm. Trivia 3 about uh, Nicholas Not Cage, no. about John, no, John Cusack, Cusack, who refuses to talk about Con Air. Yep. So we I asked Tom, can you dig a little deeper? Tom dug deep. I put on my research hat and, went into and the... found out one or two things that are libelous, so we will be explaining them, <laughs> yeah. which may or may not be related. But uh, yeah, th- there's no real reason as no. to why he don't talk about it. No, it's uh, yeah, but just perusing the dark web, have not found like iota one about why he doesn't talk about Connor. Hmm. Okay. Now, just can we jump jump back to Baywatch? Yeah. Just really, really quickly. Um, the Rock is angry with critics of Baywatch. Yeah, he's um, basically this movie tanked. I think it made like twenty two million. Kind of, it's it's not doing well in the box office, and the critics are slating us just like I did. So the Rock is coming after me. Um, so yeah, he was not happy. He went on Twitter just to. Um, Basically, he's reiterating that that old proverb that the critics are out of touch and the fans know what's what. And um, so, yeah, he kind of went on Twitter and saying, look, uh, the critics hate this, the fans love it, such a huge disconnect. And kind of crap like that. And look... Okay, can, 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 I, can I tackle that? Yeah. Um, I think what he kind of fails to forget is um fails to remember yeah, yeah that would <laughs> go too i mean if he's attacking critics here's the thing there are far more people out there who rely on their friends on social media such as facebook or twitter to give them recommendations film mm. criticism is 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 in its current guise is kind of dying yeah um we've evolved <laughs> it here ever so slightly and yeah. you may or may not have noticed but think about it now people don't rely on critics anymore it's it's a go-to excuse for hollywood hey the movie tanked oh it must be the critics blame the critics the movie mm. tanked because it's shit yeah not because of the critics generally um critics for the best part get things right i'm not just saying that um and if they get it wrong they don't get it wrong they're not mm. too far off the beaten track either um but when everybody is panning a movie uh yeah there's and, and there. here's and here's the thing and here's the thing um make no mistake about it hollywood controls who sees what and when they see it from a press release perspective if you, if, a, a, if a, a, let's be honest, studios know when they've got a crock of shit in their hands. Yeah. When there is a movie that is coming out, the press release, uh, you can generally tell, a, not all the time, but I will say the majority of the time, like 90% of the time, if the press release screening date is like the day before the movie is released. So, so let's say the movie's out on the 20th of June and the press screen is actually the 19th of June or maybe the 18th. It's a bit close for a lot of written publications to yeah. to get it out, so they may miss the review and it may go online instead. Um, but the closer to the release date, the press screening is the worst the movie generally is. And the idea is that it stops the momentum building of a bunch of bad reviews. Yeah, That's how it works. Hollywood controls it. Uh, when they see fit and at the same time they can ban uh, whoever they want from any press screening they want because it's their screening um, there's not a lot they can do about people paying to get into a movie and bad mouthing it um, and above everything else someone needs to stop this fucking madness mm-hmm. who wants mm-hmm. to see a Baywatch remake mm-hmm. The Rock really hasn't put too many feet wrong in his career no in his movie career, um, I would think this was a picture deal. So, who was the studio? Was it Par- Paramount? Paramount. So maybe he's got like a five picture deal with Paramount, and he had mm. to do this one. Yeah, I could be. Co- I have no idea. I could be completely wrong. Either way, um, it's not the critics that are responsible for the box office yeah. tanking. And I'll just say this: um, people know an Ireland movie's coming out on a Friday. Uh, Baywatch was released on a Monday. That's very telling, the studio trying to get as much out of it as they can. 
And at the end of the day, people have to look at Facebook because if the, your buddy says, hey, that movie was shit, and you go, oh, yeah, I kind of like Tom. And Tom's mm-hmm. normally right about movies. Yeah, fuck mm-hmm. it, I'm not going to go see it. Um, and there's a lot of other things you have to look at, the marketing campaign, trailers, all that kind of thing, and the whole fucking idea. Somebody, did anybody run the infamous Hollywood algorithm that said, oh, yeah, everybody would like to see a Baywatch remake? No, they fucking didn't. <laughs> and, like, people who this is aimed at who the humor is aimed at the story is aimed at they're they're the 15 to like 21 Marcus they're they don't remember Baywatch mm. so yeah and you know what you can call myself and Tom Crumudge and Snow Fox hey listen I like dick and pussy jokes as much as the next person uh, but you know what prepare for a lot of dick jokes uh, fucking it just gets to a point where it's boring you know, it's like when you look at the first American Pie, they're all the kind of same. But if the characters are likable, you yeah. suffer you suffer the dick jokes and the fucking whatever. Um, nah, this is just, this is going to tank. Uh, it's tanking like um, Pirates, which is made about 300 million worldwide. Pirates yeah. of the Caribbean, Salazar's Revenge. Has made back its initial budget, but as we always say, you have to double that to break even. At the at the very very least, so I I would have thought pirates is 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 it's still it's still on the high fucking seas, <laughs> it's not in the port yet. Um, but anyway, one more one more uh, nautical joke. Come on, um, you can do it. You can do. I fit in. Um, starboard port portals propellers. Come on, in, come on, you can do Davy it. Davy Jones. You can do it. Whales, water. Um, Say it's not a whale of a time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, ultimately, it's sunk. Boom, there you go. <laughs> yes. Took a lot of fucking people who are like, how the fuck do I unsubscribe? <laughs> people are hitting the unsubscribe button so fucking fast in the podcast, they actually subscribe to the game. <laughs> Thanks for that. Oh, man. (laughs) All right. um, Talk to me about Logan Lucky. Steven Soderbergh does the uh, Coen Brothers. I I don't think Steven Soderbergh has made an amazing movie in quite some time. Um, No, not really. Behind the Candelabra was really good. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, it was kind of a bit different from Soderbergh. But, like, what's his last couple of movies... The Ocean Trilogy, which were just kind of the same movie again and again. Magic Mike. Which, which started off well, but went yeah. somewhere very fucking dark. And then that was taken away from and just became uh, female eye candy. Mm. Um, so, yeah, like... Yeah, he hasn't, he hasn't like, knocked out of the park in a while. No, but uh, this Logan Lucky thing looks looks interesting. I think, though, Soderbergh suffers from Judd Apatow syndrome from time to time. That his too self indulgent. Too self indulgent, and his yeah. movies are always like twenty minutes to half an hour too long. Yeah, and like this, um, we've said it there. This, this is very different. Solberg. The minute I saw it, it goes. This feels like Coen Brothers. Has the humor of Coen Brothers. Has the the uh, the car- type of characters you expect from a Coen Brothers movie. It's uh, it's not a heist film, and it's uh, Chan- mm. <laughs> it's Channing Tatum and Adam Driver mm. as. For who? Who is that grown for? Just for all of it, really. All of it, all right. Um, so, yeah, the two brothers who, uh, they want to break a family curse by robbing a, uh, a racing event, like an, an Indy 500, Coca-Cola 600, that's what they call it. Um, all right, you know what? I've heard enough. Okay. I've heard enough. Fuck that. I've heard enough. Throw that shit out of here. Yeah, Daniel Craig's in it. Throw that <laughs> shit out of here. Um... What's this insanity we're hearing about X-Men New Mutants is going to be a horror movie? Yeah, um, so New Mutants... <sighs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's just going to be the grown cast. That would be an interesting podcast. <laughs> just, you, just listening to grown men just... <sighs> you complaining about for it's some crap. Oh wait, that's the normal podcast. <sighs> <laughs> so yeah, the... Um, Fox are continuing the, the X-Men franchise. <sighs> <laughs> with the new mutants which is kind of a can I can I at least say one sentence without a groan underneath it come on alright <laughs> oh this is the most curmudgeon you've ever been 
This is what going to Belfast does to you. Come on. So, yeah. Um, um, it's coming from Josh Boone. Oh, I'm waiting for the groan. Director of Fault in Our Stars. Uh, <laughs> which wasn't a bad movie, wasn't, to be fair. Yeah, it was pretty good. Um, so, it's going to be about the younger X-Men, kind of the new students. And he says it's going to be... Uh, Say Fox wants to make all of these new X Men spin offs as drastically different as they can. And we've seen it. Deadpool was an all out comedy. Logan was kind mm-hmm. of just this really dark drama, noir even. So, New Mutants, apparently, it's going to be more of a horror movie. Mm. Mm. And it. From these two characters, I see how they can make it. They have uh, Anya Taylor Joy from Split and The Witch. She uh, she's playing a character called Magic, and Maisie Williams we all know as Arya from Game of Thrones. She's playing Wolvesbane, who's basically Wolvesbane. She's basically her mutant power. She's a werewolf. She can turn into like a kind of a wolf type creature, and Magic. As, as the name suggests, she kind of taps into magic, and in the comics, she has this huge, uh-huh. long story. <laughs> Can I just say something? Why don't you fucking grow? I left you go for fucking two minutes. Yeah, how about let me go for twenty? No, uh, <laughs> we'll all be fucking <laughs> grown then. But yeah, no. In in the comic books, she has like um, she traveled to a demon dimension, and she became like a demon queen and all that. So that's where that's probably where that movie is going to take us. So it's going to be like. A, t- a teen superhero movie mixed with a horror film, which I am interested to see. Okay. And, like, we've seen these, like, as I said, the X-Men spin-offs want to do something different. They did something different. Deadpool did something different. Logan. Mm-hmm. So let's uh, let's see what they do with this. When is this uh, due for release? Yes. Um, let me check there now. It's about two, three years away, is it? I'd say 2018, 20, 2019. Let's say at the, late, at the earliest. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, hang on. i got to take a call, Tom. <laughs> Hello. Oh, it's Kenny Loggins. <laughs> oh, we're going to the fucking danger zone. zone. We're going to the, the danger, danger zone, zone again. Thanks, Kenny. Bye. <laughs> we got to go to the fucking danger zone again because Top Gun Two is a fucking go. Danger zone. Yes, we're fucking finally getting Top Gun Two after how many seven eight years? I love I love how like Tom Cruise announced this in an interview in in Australia doing press for the Mummy. And, like, literally, I'd say the words had come out of his mouth, and Val Kilmer had some shitty old Top Gun t shirt on. <laughs> oh, I'm ready, Tom! <laughs> yeah. I. I uh, yes, uh, Iceman may be back. We. I'm not, not confirmed yet. What the fuck, man? Iceman needs to go with Goose. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so. Top Gun 2 is a go. I, I'm, I'm not fucking sure. Delighted. I'm, I'm fucking delighted. I'm thrilled. I'm yeah. fucking thrilled. I, I love the original Top Gun. Um, it, it it made me buy one of those flight jackets or convince me oh, yes. to buy one of those flight jackets. But, uh, you know, the ones with the furry collars. Yeah, the then, story has been yeah. <laughs> told a lot. And people haven't been listening to the podcast that long time. Oh, right. um, I'm not sure where they're going to fucking go with it. Are, are they going to go like Frankenstein where like they resurrect Goose? <laughs> And he comes fucking back. Um, or, or they're going for real like the X Men movie, so no. You know, I just, just I don't know. Well, um, we may have an idea of where the story's going to go. Okay. Okay. So uh, please don't say Maverick is like a fucking Maverick takes the place. Who was the ball guy? Oh, I want to say Strickland. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think it is because. Yeah, I but think I mean, that might be. I, um, don't say that's the way it's going to fucking go. Maybe. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> so Joseph Kaczynski is I to who be you the interviewed? Who I interviewed? Uh-huh. Really nice man. Um, maybe we can give you a fucking part. Maybe. Uh, fuck it. <laughs> no, my luck. I'd be Goose Two and a fucking. Oh, I like it. <laughs> Did you say Goose or Goose Two? Goose Two. Oh, oh, Goose. I've killed off screen. Yeah. Irish Tom. I'm fucking Goose. Ghost. Bye. Maybe that's where it came from. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he's eyed to direct this, which isn't surprising since like uh, Cruz has a say pretty much in all of his mm-hmm. all of his movies, and he's worked with him before, and he likes working with him. And the story I've heard is 
going to be set in real time, so it'll be set now. Um, going to deal with drone technology and how mm. it's going to deal with how Maverick, as like a dog fighter and kind of grew up and came up through the ranks and flying a plane, how he's dealing with having to take a back seat to this new technology, which I find very fucking fascinating. All okay, of- can I can I predict the end of the movie? Maverick versus a rogue drone. <laughs> I don't think that's how it's going to go, but that would be awesome. Why don't you think that's the way it's going to go? I thinking about it now, you're probably right. I just like I when I initially heard, I thought it was going to be a kind of a bit more grounded than that. But him versus a rogue drone actually would work. Let's was, be honest, the original wasn't that fucking. Yeah, grounded. that's true. So looking through the roast and the glasses, probably. But are we going to get a scene, uh, the volleyball scene played with drones? Mm. Is <laughs> Kelly McGillis dead? I don't know. All right. But uh, yeah, like um, I'm, I'm really fascinated that that's the way they go. Like, because there's been a lot of movies about drones in the last couple of years, like Good Kill and all that, and they've dealt with basically just emergent drone technology and how to kind of. Mm. I but, I really fucking wonder. How the fuck? I really hope they don't have Val Kilmer back in this movie. Why not? I just didn't like him. He was a cunt in 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 thing. And but but the, that's the sign of a good actor, then, if you hate the character. Yeah, I guess, but now the fact that he's fucking going around the place with this, I got need for speed again, son, or whatever the fuck's on his t-shirt. Uh, hang on, let let let. let hang me. on. Did, oh, sorry, sorry. Did this actually happen? Did he pull out a Top Gun t-shirt? Yep. All right, I thought you were just being fucking no facetious. No. There we go. Uh, hang on, let me let me let me fucking. Okay, we're not prepared here at all. <laughs> no one thinks well, we're professional. He's, he's replying to lots of people, actually. <laughs> um, oh, here he is. Yeah, it's there's Val, cool as ice, with a white T-shirt with a, a fucking image of of of. Iceman. Why does he look like Eric Roberts? I don't know what he looks like. <laughs> he, fucking, he looks fit named Eric Roberts there. Um, go, go to the bottom one. Okay, anyway. he needs to cut his hair. What um, the fuck? So, so he's there like, Hey, Tom! Tom! I'm sending these fucking pictures now, Tom. I'm a fucking artist, Tom. Tom? Tom? Are you there, Tom? 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 Can I have a job, Tom? The fuck... I don't know. I I would think that if Val Kilmer is included in this movie, he would go, I'm back too. Or he'd have some other shit as opposed to going, any chance of a job, yeah, kid. <laughs> Which is not... I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's just me being a fucking grumpy fuck. Oh, it's definitely you being a grumpy fuck. You think? <laughs> it is definitely you being a grumpy fuck. Yeah, but I mean, you know, his, his character doesn't, you know, the last time they were like, hey, we're all buddies now. I'll be your fucking wingman anytime, man. Like, yeah. Oh, get okay, the, how, how, what, what's it going to be? Maverick is like, hey, Iceman, give me the fucking remote control for the fucking drone. We're all going to die. Well, they're obviously going to be fucking higher up in the military by then. They're probably going to be commanders. Okay, I can't wait to see the drone fly by as close to a control tower. <laughs> the fuck, like, when Top Gun was out in 1986. Yeah. 96, 2006, it's like 400 years since the fucking thing came out. How are they going to it's fill in the gaps? It's 30 for those wanting to really know. How are they going to... Oh, it's 31, actually. 31. How oh, are oh they going, sorry. Well, fucking 80... Yeah. How are they going to fill in the gaps? I don't know how the fuck did... I know somebody's going, I'll fill in Kelly McGillis' fucking gap. Yeah! Motherfucker said what I'm thinking. Yeah! How did the two Jakes fill in the gap? How did Independence Day Insurrection or whatever, Resurgence fill Oh in yeah, the your gaps? dad died there. Oh, Grant, so he's dead. <laughs> okay, not a great example. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe he could live on a fucking island off the coast there of Kerry. <laughs> And not speak for fucking the entire movie. It only appeared in the last two minutes. Uh, yeah, just because Tom Cruise's fucking name is on it don't mean that it's going to be fucking Maverick Mania. Oh, no. That, like, I'm not expecting that. I am. Yeah, well, you expect too much. 
I, I fucking do, really. Yeah. I do. All right. Just before we get out of here, time to wrap up and uh, unleash our critically acclaimed screen actor on a movie that he hasn't starred in as of yet. A critically acclaimed screen actor quotes movies he hasn't starred in. Nature made me a freak. Man made me a weapon. And God made it last too long. I would like to see a critical Cain screen actor as Logan. Yeah? Yeah. Really? Yeah, no, just kind of uh, more curmudgeon-y, more... Uh, just that people want curmudgeonry, <laughs> this week's podcast will suffice. Yep. <laughs> that is it, folks. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher. We will chat to you next week. His name is Tom Wideman. <laughs> We're drunk now. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. The MovieBit.com Podcasts. Available on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, Direct Download, and streaming on the MovieBit.com. Stream.